Right, so now we're moving on to chapter five, where we start to do the real work of building up the Linux from scratch system. So I'll start by booting up the virtual image. Now this part, they're going to be tests that are run um, where I've run the development version and the release candidate prior to version 11.3 I've made some notes where there have been failures both inside the virtual box and without the virtual box and there are some differences and changes so obviously as this has just been released today I'm not exactly sure what failures and passes are going to be so I'll just have to see how it goes but as I say, as long as there's nothing too major going on, not too many failures, then uh, we can carry on. But we'll just have to see what happens. So chapter eight, installing basic system software. Um, so there's an introduction here in this chapter, we start constructing the LFS system in earnest. Um, the installation of software is straightforward, although in many cases the installation instructions could be made shorter and more generic. We've opted to provide a full instructions for every package to minimize positive possibilities for mistakes. Um, the key to learning what makes system Linux system work is to know what each package is used for and why you or the system may need it. So there's a lot more information there. I'm not going to go through that. Um, it's a bit there about static libraries, they're not used in Linux from scratch. So you'll see this disable static option um, everywhere in the configure options. Sometimes it's not required. In fact, I think some configures give warnings that it's an, un an, an unrecognized option, but it's uh, not anything to worry about. There's a bit there about package management. Well, if you're doing this for educational reasons, you're probably not interested in that anyway. Um, if you are looking to manage packages through some technique, then there's some suggestions there for how that's done. I've never personally bothered with that in the past when I've, I first used Linux from scratch as my day-to-day uh, -day system. I've very rarely updated anything. It tended to use to, use to be things like um, well, major packages, um, and even then they were built into the opt directory where they could easily be uh, reconfigured. Um, but certainly things like glibc are not, not the sort of thing you can upgrade easily. So what I tended to do is just to rebuild Linux from scratch, from scratch every year or two, which was, yeah, quite a lot of work, but it was the best way I felt to ensure that you've got a system which hasn't been tainted by having multiple versions overwritten or in, in the same place. Um, and I never bothered with any sort of package management system at all. So let's start with man pages. So we start by extracting that. and a simple installation and that's done so that's the first out of the way next one Iana etc And that's just a simple case of copying these two files. And that's done. So the first major package we're doing is glibc. So you can see now this takes 11 SBU, so it's quite a long time, but that includes the tests as well. Uh, right. 
So first we've got this patch and then a said to fix the security issue. And then we're going to build in a separate directory. Put this fix in again, run the configure command. And now we can build. So I'm just going to time this to see how close it is to the estimate. Okay, well that part's only taken 14, uh, 40 seconds, sorry. So the test is obviously going to take the bulk of the time. So I'll time this again, make check, and wait for this to complete.
Okay, so that's finished. It took 16 minutes. So it's a little bit longer than expected. But then it occurred to me during that there was a test where it was time locked, it seems. So I imagine irrespective of the performance of the machine it's on, that test is always going to take the same amount of time. So that's another reason why the SBUs aren't accurate because that's something you cannot account for easily. So you can see we've got five failures. Again, this is different to what I got in my tests, but it could be down to the fact that um, it's a different version again of Linux from scratch, different version tools, etc. So let's see what we've got. Go up here, we can find the first failure, IO test Elch mod. Well, that's known about, known to fail in the LFS true environment, so we can ignore that one. Test double VLAN 4 AVX2. So it doesn't look like that's mentioned there. So that may be a possible concern. Test float VLAN. That's not mentioned. Test TTY name is and test UDP timeout. So there's three there that aren't accounted for. In my test, I was actually seeing this one, but that hasn't come up at all. So it can vary. And as I say, with this um, processor with the asymmetric cores, it could be that some are running on different cores, could be possibly causing some discrepancies in the tests, but it's only three extra. It's not something I'm gonna worry about too much. Um, so I'll carry on with the rest of the installation. Um, and as I said previously, actually, that it could be the fact that I'm in the virtualized environment. Um, when I ran this originally, I had four failures on the first one of the development versions I ran. Um, subsequently I got two failures on a different development version I ran and then when I ran the release candidate prior to this release I got two as well so it, it just shows how it can vary a little bit it's quite sensitive to maybe what version um, or combinations of versions that are being run of the different pieces of software so let's install this now As long as the number is a minor and they don't seem to be anything severe, it's safe to carry on. I say if you're going to be using the resultant or the results of compiling Linux from scratch for serious day-to-day -day use, then you may want to consider investigating why or maybe recompiling and see if you get the same errors or starting from scratch again and seeing if the errors are uh, replicatable. Um, and if they are, probably it's just it's just the way that um, things are done, or the versions of the various packages that are being used, which are causing those failures, or even searching the internet for other people who may have similar errors uh, with reasons for why things are happening. So now we've got to create some locales. Normally, what you do here is well, we've got to create this directory. Um, you don't even create the locales that are necessary for your installation, um, but full full coverage of tests in the packages that are coming up, we need to install all of these locales. So I'm going to copy them all. There shouldn't be any output, I don't think, while these are run. Um, and then it says to also install your own country language and character set. Well, I believe for the UK. Yeah, they're both in here. You need the UTF-8 one and the ISO one. So they're, they're both in there for the UK, so I don't need to do anything extra. Otherwise, if your country and language is not there, you do need to run it for um, your own country as appropriate. Alternatively, you can run this command, which will install every single uh, locale, which does take a while, it says. I don't know how long it takes. I don't think I've ever run that. Um, and there's an example there for creating locales not, not listed. 
So now we need to create this nsswitch.conf configuration file and add some time zone data. So let's do these commands one at a time. and unset that variable. Now we set the time zone for this installation and we run this TZ select command and we just answer the question. So what continent are we on? What country are we in? So let's look for Britain eight. Is the information correct? Yes. So this is the important bit, Europe stroke London, that's the bit I need to know. And what I'll do is copy this command, paste it in, go back to the XXX and just paste that in its place. And you can see it creates a link. Configure the dynamic loader, so tell it where to look for libraries. And if you're gonna do LFS, it's worth adding this one in as well. Um, oh no, it's, uh, is it include files? I thought it was for LFS, I'm not sure, but it's worth adding that in as well. So that's glibc done. Let's remove that and move on to zlib. So configure build it test it install it and remove a static library and said lib done. BZIP two. Oops, that's got a patch file, is it? Yep, so patch, run a set in, and another one to run in. Prepare it for compilation. Build it. Install it. Copy the library, shared library with a link, install it into the user bin and replace the copy. We'll just move to sim links and remove a static library. So XZ next. Configure build it run the tests all passed and install it tidy it up and we'll start on the next one which is set standard. So make prefix user, just build it straight away, there's no configuration. Now it says for the tests, only the fail in capital letters is an actual test failure. So let's run the tests. Okay, didn't seem to be any errors there at all. So we can install it. 
and remove a static library. And that's it, standard done. And now we move on to file. So I configure it. Build it. Run the tests. All OK. And install it. So read line is next. So we've got two said commands to run. And a patch. And a configure. Compile it. There's no test suite, so we just install it and we'll install some documentation as well. And that's read line done. And move on to M4. Build it, test it. That's all good. Install it and it's done. So next is BC. Prepare it for compilation with this configure command. Build it. Test it. All done and install. So that's BC done. We move on to flex. So configure. Build it. Test it. That's all passed. Install the package and create a sim link. It's complete. So now move on to TCL next. So TCL dash source is the file we need. And put these commands in separately and run the configure. Build it. Okay, so now we're going to run these three sed commands in. And unset that variable. And we can run the tests. Oh, 
I think there is one of these tests which just sits here. It looks like everything's locked up, nothing's happening, but it does actually continue at some point. Right, so that's finished. We've got no failures, so that's fine. Let's install. Change the mode of a file. Install some private headers. Simlink. Rename a file. And we can install some documentation as well. That's complete. So I've got expect config. 
figure. Build it, test it. K0 failed. Install the package and create a symlink. And that's that one complete. Deja new, Deja gnu, don't know how to pronounce it exactly, but Deja gnu. So separate build directory again. Prepare it for installation with a configure command and a couple of make info commands. Build the package and a couple of install commands. And then we make check to test it. And that looks all successful. It's now gone to bin utils. So we run this to make sure PTI PTYs are working, and they are. Um, it does say if you don't get that response, then the environment's not set up for proper PTY operation. I don't think I've ever known this not to work, but it does say that the issue needs to be resolved before running test suites for bin utils and GCC. So that would need to be researched on how to resolve that. Once again, we've got a separate build directory that we're going to compile in, run configure to prepare the build and then actually run the build. Okay, we test the results with make K minus K check. And it does say that 12 tests fail due to some changes in GCC. I just saw some tests go past that failed. This, these tests are quite consistent uh, when I tested previously, so hopefully that hasn't changed. Okay, so 
let's run this command here to find the test that failed. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. They're all part of the gold test suite. And that's what it says, 12 test fail, so that's fine. We'll just go ahead and install. And remove a few files. And that's been utils done. Move on next to GMP. There's a couple of notes here about compiling on a 32-bit CPU or if you're compiling for a different host processor. doesn't um, mean anything to us in this case. We're just compiling on the system we're compiling on and it is 64-bit. So we can ignore that and just run the configure command. So compile it and some documentation by the looks of it. And it says again, the test suite is critical. So we'll run that. And we can check that we've got 197 tests that have passed with that command. Yep, we've got 197. So I'll just do make install and install HTML. And that's done. Move on to MPFR. One that's said to put in and configure. Build it, build some HTML, test the results, and it says to check there's 197 passes, which there is. So we just install the package and the HTML, and that's MPFR done. MPC is next. So we have the configure command. Build it. And some documentation. Run the tests. All, all have passed, so that's fine install and the HTML and that's MPC done. So ATTR run the configure build it it says the test must be run on a file system that supports extended attributes such as x2, 3 or 4. So we should be fine there. Oops. And yeah, I've got two out of two passes. Install. And that's complete. Next is ACL. Oops, ACL. Figure build. Now it says the ACL test must be run on a file system that supports access controls, but not until Core Utils package has been built using the ACL libraries. If desired, return to this package and run make check after Core Utils package has been built. So we're going to have to do that. We'll have to just install it without testing. After Core Utils has been built, we'll come back, rebuild it, test it, and reinstall it. So for now, let's just install what we've got. Tidy that up. And what I'm going to do is to open this as a new tab. 
and try and remember after core utils that we've got ACL to rebuild and test specifically. So lib cap. Got that set to run. And build it. Test it and install it. Tidy up. And we move on to shadow. There's something there about using um, Cracklib to enforce strong passwords. Uh, what I tend to do is just install LFS as it is, because that's you know primarily what we're doing. Um, and then you can reinstall Shadow in, in the BLFS part of the book. So um, unless you particularly want that now, it's best just to follow the LFS book, especially if it's the first time or you're still unsure about what you're doing. Just follow the book. Don't take any um, other options. So let's run these commands here to disable some functionality that can be provided by other packages. So we'll just copy these commands in one at a time. If you wish to include bin and or sbin in the path for some reason, modify the path in the bash RC after LFS has been built. Okay, we'll just again take the defaults, just trust what the editors have done. Touch a file, make sure it exists. Run the configure. And build the package. Install it. And looks like we build some main pages and install them. Convert the passwords and the groups to your shadow. Make a change to the default parameters. The file etc default user must be created and tailored to suit your particular needs. So we'll create it with that. And set the default group ID to 999. Um, this option here, if you'd rather not create these mail spool files, run this option here. So I'll run that. It does mean I think when you delete a user, it says it can't find the spool directory to delete, but that's not a big worry. And lastly, we set the root password. So whatever you set here, remember it because you'll need it to log on for the first time when we boot into Linux from scratch. And that's shadow complete. And we now move on to GCC, which is the biggest package, takes the longest to compile, takes up the most disk space. Certainly while compiling anyway. So we change the name of the lib file for 64 bit, uh, lib directory, sorry, for 64 bits. Create a temporary build in, uh, directory and run configure and we build it. How long is this going to take in total? 43 SBUs with tests. So that's quite a long time. Let's run, see how long it takes to compile it. And then when that's done, I'll test the test or yeah, time the testing, see how long that takes. So in theory, this should take approximately 20 odd minutes, 20, 25 minutes with the tests.
All right, so that took three minutes. So it looks like the tests are going to take approximately 20 minutes to run. And to do that, again, this is uh, important to run. And it does say you can improve the speed of the test by adding minus JX to the check command. So we'll try that, see if we can get any extra speed out of it. We we'll adjust the U limit, change the ownership of the files to tester. Paste in the command, we're going to add in minus J32, uh, not 32, sorry, 24. And I'll time this as well.
Okay, well that took 15 minutes, so yeah, maybe a slight improvement in speed with that minus J. So let's see what errors we've got. Punch this command in and get the summary. Let's see what we've got. So we've got four unexpected failures in the G++ part. Yeah, four tests relate to PR 100, 400, maybe reported as both X pass and fail. So we've got unexpected successes and failures. So that's probably those ones. That's fine. Um, 11 failures in GCC. Yeah, we get that as well. So that's good. That's fine. Unexpected failures in lib standard C++. Right, yeah, now this, uh, what do we got here, six. Yeah, I did get this in the release candidate version, but not in one of the development versions, I don't think. So that looks okay. That that kind of replicates what I got in the previous release candidate. So although it's not listed in the book, I'm happy that that's at least some sort of consistency there with what I've seen previously. So that's fine. Okay, so I'm happy with those results. So I'll carry on. Install the package and we set the ownership back to root. Create a sim link, add a compatibility link. And now we do some tests to see uh, if we can check the linking and compiling works properly. So we should get lib 64 ld linux x86 64.so.2, which we do. Make sure we set up to use this correct start files. And that looks fine. Yep, that's fine. Verify the compiler is searching for the correct header files. Yep, that looks fine as well. Now verify the new linker is being used with the correct search paths. That's fine, that one's okay, 6.4. Yep, that matches, 32-bit system, slightly different. Attempt to open user lib, libc so 6 succeeded, that's fine. Found any Linux x64. Yep, that's fine. So clean up the test files, make a directory and move some files into that directory and that's GCC complete. So now we move on to package config. So we configure. Build. And test. All, all have passed and install it. So move on to N curses next. Configure the package. 
build it. Oops. It's okay now. I thought it finished. Yep, that's fine. Build it. So it says the package is test suite, but it can only be run after the package has been installed. And it says the installation is package driver right, lib and curses in place, make crash the shell process. So I have to do a dester install. Like that. Medications still expect the linker to be able to find non wired character and curses libraries, trick such applications into linking with wired character libraries. So we'll just run all that in. Finally, make sure that old applications looks for L curses at build time are still buildable. Okay, and if in desired, install some documentation. And that's complete. And there's something there about uh, building early versions of NCurses, so I won't bother with that. So that one's complete. We want to set next. Configure it. Build it, build some documentation, change the ownership of the files to test that and run the tests. And that looks fine. Everything's passed that was run. So install it, install documentation. And that's set complete. PS misc. Straightforward configure. Make and make install. And that's done. Get text. I'll configure it. and build it. Okay, now let's run the test. Let's see how long this takes. It does say three SBUs, but it says the overall package only takes 1.3. So let's see what's right. Three SBUs would equate to about a minute and a half. It's already taken probably about a minute. Okay, yes, yeah, so that was only 14 seconds. So that's obviously incorrect and needs to be updated, that estimate. So we've got passes. Everything's passed that was run. Let's install the package. 
and change the mode of a file by the looks of it. And it's done. So move on to Bison next. Configure, oops. Build. And once again, the tests exceed the approximate build time. And I think, I'm pretty sure it says at the beginning of the book that the approximate build time includes tests. So again, it's a discrepancy there. Let's see how long it takes to test this. Now it could be this is fast testing because it's using all the cores available it could be why it's not taking as long as it says but it's still an inconsistency that the total build time is less than the test time Okay, so that took a minute, so that's about two SBUs. So I'd say that the top is possibly accurate, um, although this would be accurate if it was run on fewer cores. So yeah, and so the, these approximations are very, very approximate. Let's install the package and tidy it up and move on to grep. Have a set to put in. Configure the package. Oh, that didn't copy. Right. Build it and test it. And that's all passed, so let's install it. So now we do bash. Configure the package. Build a package. And we're going to test it, so let's change everything to be owned by tester and then run this as a complete command.
Okay, that's finished. Um, there's nothing indicating there's been an error at the end. Didn't notice anything untoward. No, there's nothing there. So it looks like it's a complete pass. So I think we're okay to do an install. Oh, well, it's the pace not working probably here. Looks like it's running the tests again. Uh, yeah, seems like right. That's better. Okay. Uh, all we need to do now is to rerun the login, or rather, run the login to login again using the new binary. Okay, so now we move on to libtool. Configure. Build. Test the results. It says we can improve speed using minus J4. Uh, oh, for instance, using my J4, so let's do minus J24 and see if that'll actually improve the speed of it. Well, it doesn't seem to be using more than four cores anyway, despite that. Oh, right, okay, I see. I've done this before. Why that's not running on all cores, it's because uh, this needs to be appended like that. Right, that's better, that's quicker. And yeah, it looks like it is using all cores now. Okay, we've got passes there. There were some failures, yep. So 58 expected. So we've got seven failures. That ties up with what we've got here because it says five are known to fail because of circular dependency. So we need to rerun this after Automaker has been installed, but also two tests trigger a warning and fail. So that makes up the seven. So that's good for now. I'll install this and oops, yeah, why is this not am I not highlighting properly? I'll install this, remove a static library, and I'll leave this up to build after auto make, wasn't it? Yep. So let's do GDBM next. Let's tidy up first. Uh, 
Okay, so configure. Build. Test the package. All tests were successful. Install it. And that's complete. GPerf next. Configure. Build it. And we have to run the test with one on one thread or one job. So that's fine. Don't look like there's any errors reported there that I can see. And install it. Oh, yeah, there we go. I've done it. I've looked to see what's next. I've deleted the uh, next package. So, okay. Let's get rid of gperf and I'll have to download expat again. Copy link, new tab. Go into sources and fetch it again. Okay, so the signature is okay. So let's go back here, move on to expat, extract it. Configure it, build it, test it, all passed, so we'll install it, and some documentation. Why not utils? Configure, oops. Build it. Test the results, all fine. Install the package and move the program. Less next. Configure. Build. There's no test suite, so let's install it and tidy it up. So now move on to Perl. A couple of environment variables to export here. And now we can run the configure. and build the package. Uh, 
And now we can run the test. It says it's going to take 11 SPUs. Let's see how it goes. The total package again is only 7.9, so I'm a little bit confused by that.
Okay, so that's finished testing. Um, looks like according to my SPUs, that took 22 SPUs. So, um, you know, at 24 seconds an SPU. So it's quite um, wildly different that is. But anyway, it's finished testing. It's all passed. That's the main thing. Let's do the install. and unset the environment variables. And now move on to XML parser. And note that this is a capital X. In the file name of the package. Why am I not? doing this properly. I don't seem to be picking up the contents of what I'm highlighting, so I have to take a bit more time to make sure it's working. Make test is all passed and install. That's fine. So Intel tool next. Run a set configure make make check all passed. Let's install it and install a document there as well. And move on to autoconf. Okay, set for a fix. Run a configure. Run the make and we can run a make check. And again, we can append this test suite flags. I'll put 24 in there because the number of cores are running. So long as takes. 6.2 SBUs with the tests. It certainly is using most of the cores. Okay, so they all passed, that's good, and it certainly was quick, that was um, just under two SBUs. So let's install that and tidy up. And move on to auto make. Run the configure, make it, let's try make minus J24 again for testing. Yeah, it was certainly using more than four cores, so adjust that minus J4 to your number of cores. It's not using the full amount, but it looks like it's using about three quarters of what's available.
Okay, they have all passed, the ones that were run. Uh, that's despite the fact that it says one's known to fail. I did indeed have that as a failure on my test, but that's good that it's actually passed. So let's do an install. And that's auto make done. So now we can go back to libtool because that relied on auto make auto make for some tests to pass correctly so let's extract that again configure it and what I'll do is first in LD config make sure those auto make libraries are loaded if there's anything like that run make to build it Make check again with the test week flags set to Okay, that's, or well, in fact it's all passed, which is unusual because it does say with grep 3.8 to test will trigger a warning and fail. Um, we've actually got, oh sorry, this is the last bit, isn't it? Yeah, we need to go back here. Uh, so we've got seven fails there. That's interesting. So it's not exactly how it says here. Five tests are known to fail. These tests pass. Oh, five expected failures. Okay, so we've got two failed. So that's right then. So, yeah, that's good. So because that's passed better than it did last time, I'm going to reinstall it. And again, remove this static library. And close that down and move on to open SSL. Configure. Build it. and test.
Okay, that's passed all the tests. Um, so we can now run this said and install the package. Add some documentation and some additional documentation. And that's that one. On to Kmod. Configure. Make now it says the test result, uh, test suite is beyond the scope of LFS because some uh, raw kernel headers required, so we'll have to skip that. Make install, create some links, and another one, and that's done. Move on to libelf, which is from the elf utils package. So we extract elf utils, run the configure, and build it. And run some checks. Yeah, run native, it does say that one's expected to fail, so that's fine. We'll install the package. And remove a static file, and that's LFUTILS done. LibFFI. Uh, there's a warning there about um, optimizing if you're trying to build for um, other processes or building for another system. So that's a warning. Uh, it doesn't matter in this case because we're just building to run on this system. So that's built, run some tests.
Okay, that's finished building, uh, checking, sorry. And it looks like we've got a pass on that. There's no errors. So let's now install and that's done. And move now on to Python. Remember Python begins with a capital P. Build it. Okay, it's built. It doesn't recommend running the test now as there's a few failures and it may hang. I've not known it to hang ever, but we can have a go. There's always a first time. See what happens.
so it looks like at that point this might be the test that hangs I'm going to do control C to abort and we can see that one's omitted 410 tests are okay two tests failed some will skipped to run uh, rerun sorry so I'd say it looks pretty good there's a minority of tests that failed or as you can see one that hung so that's good enough it does say you can rerun it at the end of the build I have done that before but it didn't seem to be that much different so it's probably best to um, if you're concerned about this to reinstall it as per the BLFS instructions there may be more dependencies that would fix these errors So it looks like we've got a configuration file here. That This warning is explained in the text above here. And install some pre-formatted documentation. And that's Python done. Next is wheel. Install it with this command, or build it rather, and then install it, and that's done. And it's got Ninja. Now, as it says at the top of this screen, it's not strictly required when we're not using systemd, which we're not. Uh, same as the next package means on, but it could be useful for um, any packages you may build in BLFS, so it's it's probably worth doing. It's a small package, it doesn't take long to build, so um, at most gonna lose a few minutes building it. Uh, let's set that to 24. Change that to the number of cores you want to build in parallel with Ninja Jobs, and we can make Ninja recognize envir this environment variable with this change here. Build it. Um, okay, let's change into the directory. Right, what have I done here? Okay, we'll have to do that set again. Uh, okay, I didn't extract it. So let's do this again. Let's try and build it. Test it. Looks okay, there's no errors reported. Yeah, that looks good. So we'll install it. All done. Move on to Mison. So we'll compile it and install it. It says the test suite requires some packages which are outside of the scope of LFS, so there's no test. And that's done. Let's now move on to core utils. We've got a patch. and configure it.
build it. And first of all, we run the test that meant to run as user root. They've all passed. Now we're going to run the remainder of tests as user tester. And it says one of the tests may fail in the true environment. So I would expect that one. Don't look like there's any problems there, so we can carry on, remove the temporary group, install the package, and move some programs to match the FHS standard. And let's call your tools done. Right, so before we carry on, we're going to do redo ACL because it relied on core utils for the tests. So I'm going to do an LD config to make sure the library is loaded. Extract ACL, change into it, run the configure command, compile it, and rerun make check. So we've got a couple of tests that have failed. Uh, what does it say here? Okay, so we've still got two tests that are failing for some reason. Let's do a little the config. No, that won't help, will it? Let's have a look at test suite log. So it looks like a permission denied for some reason. Fail permissions. Yeah, it looks like it's a permissions issue for some reason. But there's no explanation about that. Missions is set for yeah, I don't know why that's uh, not working, but um, that's just an issue maybe with uh, the ACL, possibly, I don't know. Um, but the fact is, it's passing better than it was. I um, can't remember how many it was initially. Um, ACL. So I think I'll uh, install that and carry on with the rest of the build. So call utils is done. We'll move on to check. Configure, build it, check it.
Okay, that has all passed. So we'll install it and that's complete. Move on to diff utils. Configure. Build it, test it. That's all okay, so we'll install and Diffutils is complete. So now we do cork. Make a little change. Run configure. Build. Test. It looks like it's all okay, all tests passed. Install the package. And install some optional documentation. And now we move on to find utils. So prepare it for compilation. Run the build. And now let's run the test. <laughs> Looks like everything's passed there, so let's install. Let's find utils complete. Next is Groff. First, we configure. We need to set this environment variable to page size. By default, it should be A4. If you're in America, you probably want letter as the page size. And we'll build that. There's no test suite, so when this is finished, we just run make install. And that's done. Grub next. Uh, we're not using UEFI because we're doing a basic install. As I said previously, um, if you build UEFI, you have to go to the BLFS page to do some extra packages to enable this for Grub. Also, if you've got any optimization set, which I don't recommend if you're building for the first time, you're still quite new to this, unset them completely for Grub. It will affect the build and it will mean that Grub builds and not work. So unset them. So I run a patch which causes grub install to fail when the boot partition is created by E2FS progs or later. Run the configure. B 
build a package. Uh, it says not to run the test because a lot of the packages are missing. We can run it anyway just to see how it goes. Yeah, lot, lots have failed. Um, so you can see why I don't recommend it. Make install and move a file. And that's grub complete. Now move on to gzip. Configure. Build it. Test it. And install it. IP root next. Couple of changes to make before we start the build with this command. Install it and install some documentation, and that's complete. KBD patch a couple of sets. and a configuration. Build it, test it, all successful, install it, and install some documentation. And that's done. Move on to lib pipeline. Configure. <coughs> Build it. Test it. That's all passed and install. All done. So we move on to make. One set to put in. Configure it. Build it. Test it. Okay, all passed, we'll install it. And that's completed make. Next we have patch. Conf 
figure. Make, test it, that's all passed, and install it. Then move on to tar. <coughs> Compile, uh, configure, sorry. Build package. Run some tests. Okay, that has finished. We've got one failed unexpectedly, and that was the binary store restored. Is it so bad at there? We can have a look at this test log. Yeah, there it is there. So that's an expected failure. So we can go ahead and install. Install some documentation. And tidy up. We want to text info. So we can figure B. 
build it. Run some tests. All looks good. Certainly no errors. Install it. And install some extra components. And there's something there about what to do if the user share info dir file ever needs to be recreated to run those commands there. So let's tidy that up and move on to Vim. Make a change. Compile it. And prepare for testing. Run the tests. There'll be nothing put to the screen because everything's been re redirected to the log file vim test.log and all we have to do is search for the words all done at the end to prove that it has all completed
Okay, that has finished testing. So what we need to do now is to grab for all done in vim test.log and there it is, it's repeated it back. So that shows that it's a successful test. So all we need to do now is to do make install. Make some changes to allow any users to type vi instead of vim. Uh, for those who habitually use for VI and allow the documentation to be consistent with other packages in having a versioned directory. There's a configuration file we can put in here and there's an option there to get more options for configuration. So that's vim done. Move on to EU dev. Got a set to put in here. A configure. Build it. Make some directories before we test the package. And that's all passed. And oops, install it. Add in some custom rules for LFS. And then update the hardware database. And let's see you dev done. MANDB is next. Configure. Build it, test it, that's all okay, install it. And there's some information about installing um, well, non-English manual pages in LFS and how it's uh, catered for. And it says any other manual pages not in the list are not supported. So move on to proc PSNG. Prepare it for building. Build it. Test it. All passed. So let's install and that's done. and move on to util Linux. Start by configuring the package for building. And build it. Now there's a warning here, warning here about testing the suite as a root user could be harmful to your system. So we're not going to do that. We're just going to change the ownership to tester and run the tests as tester.
Okay, so we've got one test failed. Hard link options, that's mentioned in here. Um, it's strange because I did get this MBS encode failing on uh, one of the development, uh, yeah, two MBS failures. So it's strange how it doesn't appear now, but there you go. It's uh, unknown as to why these things happen. So let's install that and tidy up. And move on to E2FS progs. Start by creating a build directory to build the package in. Run configure. Build the package. And run some tests. Okay, we've got one test failed. Assume storage pre zeroed. And yeah, I had that every time I tested this on development and the release candidate one. Um, so I'm happy with that, being as it's something that keeps on cropping up when I've built this. Never had this error, so don't quite know why that discrepancy is there. But as I say, this error is consistent with my building so I'm happy with that run make install remove some static libraries we've got an info file to install and some additional documentation to install as well oops Uh, etc mke2fs.conf contains a default value of various command line options. You may edit the file to make the default value suitable for your need. For example, some utilities not in LFS or BLFS cannot recognize an ext4 file system with the metadata C some seed feature enabled. If you need such an utility, you may remove it. Okay, so we don't need to make any changes there. Okay, and we can move on to sysklogd. Couple of set commands. Build the package and install it. All done. And we've got a configuration file to put in. And that should be it. Sysv init next. Patch file. And we can build it and install it. And that's done. And that's the last package to install apart from the kernel, which we'll come to in a short while. So move on to the debugging symbol. So at the moment we've used 3.7 gig. Um, and what this next bit does is show us how we can strip some debugging information from the binaries. Uh, 
Um, there's a warning there about if any version is different from the version specified in the book, it may be necessary to update the library name. Failing to do so may render the system completely unusable. So before I run these, I have had occasion where these this stripping these strip commands have failed. So what I'm going to do just quickly read what I need to do here. Yeah, it doesn't say about quitting the true environment. What I'm going to do is quit this or save this session and create a snapshot before I go any further. Okay, and take a snapshot. So this is going to be chapter eight, but without the uh, didn't I copy that? No, I didn't, did I? Copy, paste, that's better. So, uh, completed chapter eight, except stripping. Okay, so what I'll do is restart now. I've got that snapshot. And I'm going to run these commands in now. So let's do the first one. Get rid of that. And you can see why the versions matter because they're actually hardwired into some of the commands here. Okay, that seems to have worked okay. cleaning up so we can remove the temporary files in the temp directory. If there's any LA files hanging around, we can remove them. Compiler built in chapter six and seven is still partially installed, not needed anymore. Remove it with this. And finally delete the tester. And that should be it now. All we need to do is go into system configuration, which I'll go on to in the next video. Before I do that, I think I'll take another snapshot just to be sure. Now we've got the complete chapter eight done. So I'll save this state again. Take another snapshot. Oh, in fact, let's copy this. Take a snapshot there. If 
fill that in and restart the virtual machine. <coughs> 